It was just a couple of months ago that polls showed that British Columbia Premier David Eby and his NDP government were going to easily win re-election and not just get a big majority government, but potentially win every single seat except for maybe one or two. They were stomping their competition, and it seems like from there, David Eby took his massive lead as a challenge to see how fast he could sink himself into the floor and lose to the British Columbia Conservatives the BC Conservatives, who were effectively not even a party a year and a half ago, and now are within four points of the BC NDP. Right now, the polling is breaking down 38% NDP, 34% BC Conservatives, BC United is at 16, and the BC Greens are at 11. This is all happening because David Eby seems to be finding every single stupid thing to say and do in order to tick off British Columbia residents. BC residents have been pretty okay with the NDP's agenda over the past six years, as long as they don't go too overboard. And it's actually pretty easy not to go too overboard in BC, because a lot of people have gotten used to how crazy the Liberal and NDP governments have been in the past. So you've got to do something truly absurd in order to actually start alienating voters who have gotten used to the clown show that often is the BC government. And so David Eby this week, in order to get this terrible poll result demonstrating that his government's falling apart and the BC Conservatives have a lot of momentum, he's decided to step on every rake he could. As you might know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, BC NDP Premier David Eby attacked Federal Conservative Party leader Pierre Polyev for simply asking him to join his Axe the Tax movement and get rid of British Columbia's carbon tax. A carbon tax that only has 29% approval, or at least 29% of people wanting to keep it in place in BC. He attacked Pierre Polly of saying that his movement was a massive baloney factory and that he actually deals with real problems unlike Pierre Polly of. Just dismissive nonsense at the time when the vast majority of Canadians want massive spending and tax reform in government. And then what we then saw was British Columbia Premier David Eby then generating a new scandal from his government by having the accounting firm that was handing out green energy grants just also effectively pilfering money from those applying by forcing them to use their own like grant writing services in order to be able to basically take a bunch of more money from the people who are getting these applications. Those accounting firm is getting a bunch of government handouts. The BCNDP should know that this is what's going on because this is happening directly inside of their government. It's a contractor, but a contractor they're working closely with. They should not be confused by this. And the person blowing the whistle on this issue had informed the BC government and David Eby just assumed he was untouchable. So he didn't do anything about it, basically making himself a co-conspirator in this corruption issue. And then just today, he has made it illegal for anti-SOGI 123 protests to take place near British Columbia schools. People protesting SOGI 123 are effectively protesting one of the most sexualized and frankly disgusting sex ed curriculums that's ever been put in any school system in North America. And he's decided that not only is he going to defend SOGI 123, he's now going to crack down on people's civil liberties for even criticizing it. Are the protesters doing anything illegal? Are they threatening anyone? Are they doing anything actually legally wrong? No, David Eby just doesn't like them. This is why this person's going to lose. And this is on top of the drug scandals of BC drug gangs smuggling the safe supply drugs that British Columbia is handing out into Alberta, and then him basically being dismissive to Alberta Premier uh, Daniel Smith when she brings this up to him. He's just acting like a nasty individual. It's like a student union president somehow became the British Columbia Premier. David Eby is just deeply out of touch with people. And remember, this poll that put them in within four points, it's not an outlier anymore. This is from Liaison Research. And this is following in the footsteps of Main Street Research, which a couple weeks ago put the Conservatives within six points. And Main Street in a month before that put them within eight points. This is an ongoing trend. The only pollster is still showing the NDP doing well, like Leger. And the problem with Leger is they have a, a bias for a lot of urban voters. So when they pull Metro Vancouver, you're not getting as many people from Burnaby and outside suburbs of Vancouver. 
they tend to get a lot of people who are office workers downtown Vancouver who are natural NDP voters. This is the problem when you don't do good sampling for your polls is that you call people in the middle of the day and those people are disproportionately going to be white collar, upper middle class office workers who tend to have very progressive views on politics. You're not going to get a lot of plumbers, a lot of tradespeople, small business owners who don't have the time of day to take a polling call and tend to vote conservative. You got to do better sampling if you want to be able to reach those sort of people. And so David Eby is probably just going to keep pretending that he's dominating at the same time. He's now turning all this fire on the BC Conservatives, who have two MLAs. They have two MLAs. And he's acting like they're just a dismissive force that people shouldn't be taking seriously. At the same time, not only are they ripping away all the voters from the BC United Party, which is just a defunct party at this point, I don't even need to debunk the idea that the BC United is not a serious force anymore. They've changed their name from the BC Liberals, their brand was so bad, and they've changed their brand from at least something recognizable to something that nobody recognizes and everyone still doesn't like the party once they figure out who it is. But with the BC Conservatives, they're also ripping away NDP voters because David Eby has decided that working class people are gross and he doesn't want to talk to them and he wants upper middle class progressives who support safe supply, who support SOGI123, who want the carbon tax to be as like to preventably as not preventably, but as crazy skyrocketing high as possible because they care about the environment more than they care about middle, lower class people who do not have the ability to pay for all this stuff. The man is going to lose. Even as NDP and like a uh, Manitoba premier, Wab Canoe is running away from the liberals. For some reason, David Eby is like tying himself to Justin Trudeau for no reason. It's a complete own goal. This is why I'm saying it's like David Eby's trying to lose. It's like he will only tie himself to a policy that has below 30% approval. Safe supply, the carbon tax, his crazy restrictive building policies in the province, crazy high immigration, which, you know, that might be a federal policy, but he's one of the main supporters of saying, just bring more of it in here. And he's also just not enforcing the law at all. There's a reason why stabbing attacks, drug related crime is way up in Vancouver. Car theft is up like 60%. Not going to do anything about it. He doesn't care. And even if the bail laws are bad on a federal level, he just doesn't do anything for the police. He's completely worthless. If you're in British Columbia, I beg you, please vote for the BC Conservatives. Because even if I don't live in your province, I want as many provinces to have rational governments as possible. It affects the rest of the country if there are crazy governments in certain parts of Canada who are making crazy ideas more normal. That's how you got a David Eby in the first place. It was the slow march towards progressive ruination. And David Eby is just the logical conclusion of things that Gordon Campbell, Christy Clark, and then John Horgan did. We need to actually not just get to a better, like a past status quo that wasn't as bad. Like, don't bring BC back to what it was 10 years ago. You got to make a new, better status quo. And I hope John Roosted and the BC Conservatives do that. Do not vote for the BC United. They will not win. They have no ability to win. They, they are a dying party. And the only reason they have any polling left over is because when they get polled, pollsters mention that they are the former Liberal Party. And through sheer name recognition and people assuming that they're the main opposition to the NDP, people still pick them. In five months, it's going to be probably the BC Conservatives at 38, 42%. Go BC Conservatives no matter what part of the country you're living in, and you'll actually potentially get a good government, not some lukewarm, half conservative government like the BC Liberals sort of represented in the past. You need like full fat conservatism if you want to pull out of this tailspin. Every province eventually needs the reformer who guts all the spending and makes sure to get the province back on the right track. You guys need to go through your Ralph Klein phase. And I believe that John Ruchstead would be a good transformative Ralph Klein figure for you guys. Anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. I just quickly want to plug, if you live in Alberta or Calgary, I'm running for the Calgary Signal Hill Federal Conservative Party nomination. So if you live in this area, buy a federal conservative membership and check out my website in the description below, wyattclaypool.com. And you can also donate to the legal fund for the National Telegraph. That's do uh, that's linked in the description below. I've paid more than $26,000 defending us from a Chinese billionaire who's suing us for defamation that he has not provided any evidence to prove. And he is suing us because we referenced an article from the Globe and Mail that was a year and a half old when we hyperlinked in one of our articles. It's the most ridiculous lawsuit we've ever seen in our lives, but he's suing simply because he can and he can legally harass people. 
So if you want to donate there, it really helps reduce the burden of cost on us and allows us to reinvest more in the National Telegraph, put out more content, make our sets a little bit nicer and actually pay for editing software for a change. Anyways, that's it for me today. Have a good one.